Hey everybody, final thoughts. Time for Zapotec and, oh yeah, I love this one. Of course I do! Because I love the games Board and Dice keeps putting out these, I I'm not going to say this in a bad way, although people will take it how they take it, these dry and dusty Euros on sepia brown tan boards with little splotches of color that are just all about sitting down and crunching your brain for a good amount of time to harvest goods, to convert into other goods, to complete objectives, to get points. I can't get enough of it. Um, you, know, you, you know, probably, if you've watched my show before, that this is a strong suit for me, and Board and Dice are consistently putting out some of the best versions of this core formula. Um, you know, your Teotihuacans and your... Oh, what was that? What, the one you just did? Uh, Origins, um, you know, First Builders, and uh, Tekken... Or, uh, not Tekken, that's a... That's a video game, fighting game. Uh, Tekkenu. I mean, there's so many of them out there. And um, so, I guess the first question is, well, okay... Is uh, Zapotec just one more? Do we need another one? Don't we already have enough of these? And there are some things that really make this one stand out and are make it a definite keeper for me, going right up there on the shelf. Um, the biggest one is it's from Fabio Lapiano. And uh, this is a Euro designer on the rise. Uh, was it last year or the year before he brought out Merv, which was a really, really big hit with me and Jen, and I think it was just a big hit in general. And prior to that, um, there was Ragusa and Kali Mala. I mean, he has just been increasing strength upon strength upon strength. And I gotta say, I do think this is my favorite of his games. And um, you could say it's because of the really clever and innovative uh, harvesting system. This grid that you, um, as you build in specific spots, as you put more of these tiles down, you'll harvest more and more. That is very satisfying. You've got the tough choice of, okay, I want to make these perfect rows, but when you know I also want to get these extra little bonus boosts, uh, which encourage me not to do the extra rows so that I can get a jump start on some of the more advanced actions that otherwise I won't be able to do until later in the game. Um, and then as you're building these, trying to diversify or you know simplify and streamline down, this is a fun little thing all by itself. And then on, it just drives what's already a cool game. So I love that. But that's not what really makes this game sing. What's really special is, what is the official time? 60 to 75 minutes? Jen and I can finish this game in under that time. Uh, the first time we played this, it barely took us an hour, and that included me teaching Jen how to play the game. This is a robust full-throated, wonderful Euro, uh, you know, along the lines of what I was talking about earlier, that plays in a fraction of the time. And yet, it is so satisfying. You are only going to play over five rounds. Um, each of those rounds, you are going to play one card. And um, so you're and, and you're just going to try and get as much done. And the escalation is just through the roof. You achieve nothing on the first round. You can do a bunch of stuff at the end. There are a handful of different paths you can uh, pursue. You're not going to be able to do well at all. I mean, you really do have to pick and choose where you're, or you're going to focus. But even still, uh, it seems impossible by the end of the game to be able to have pulled off um, what you end up doing when you think back to, oh my gosh, look at where I started. And it was just a half an hour ago. I mean, I could play three games of this in the time it would take me to play a Tiwakan, and I get all the same feels. I get the highs and lows. I get that really good buzz of, of you know, building towards something, seeing my long-term goals and finding a way to make them happen, seeing them maybe be manipulated by other players and having to pivot. Um, also... I love initiative-based card games. You know, ever since Gloomhaven, the idea of, okay, well, I really want this, but, oh, I need to go first, because we're both. I, you've got coins, I've got coins. One of us is going to get that. So I could play this eight, and maybe it'll be fast enough, but I don't even want to build temples. <gasps> but your pyramid is focusing on temples. And if I get at least one level of your pyramid done, then this would make it worthwhile. Okay, I'll go for it. And then you played a seven. Ah! You know, I mean... I, I love that, that there is, in such a tight-packed little space of time, a lot of really interesting, exciting drama. And while my run-through didn't get a chance to show it, um, you know, the centerpiece of the game, these wonderful-looking plastic pyramids that can build up over the course of the game, these are absolutely lovely, but it's great that multiple players can work on them as well. And, uh, you know, that's just a lot of fun. Two, uh, you know, in a two-player game, you're only ever going to see two of them built. And uh, the more the more levels you build, the more you can actually invest in the long-term goals. But as soon as one gets built, that becomes a extra in-game scoring bonus that everybody can pursue if they contribute. And so you will often see players, um, you know, oh, you started that pyramid, I'm going to finish it um, because I mean, if you finish it, you know, if you finish a level three pyramid all by yourself, that's 15 bonus points for you. That's going to win the game. I've got 
ought to jump in there so at least I get five of those 15 points. And now that I'm in it with you, I need to start building some temples so I'll get some benefit out of it too. So there's a lot of really interesting, subtle, but omnipresent, um, you know, uh, intertwinedness between players. Um, you know, and again, all this stuff I've talked about in other games, but they are games that generally take upwards of two hours to play to get all of these feels. And somehow, Fabio Lapiano and Board and Dice have crunched all of that stuff into such a tight, fast-playing little package. This is a diamond of a game that has been built out of tons of coal that have just been compressed down into something fast and fluid and just about perfect. I have one complaint, and it feels like it has just become a bog-standard complaint I think it have in almost all of Board & Dice games that, again, they completely ignore um, scaling for progress tracks. Because if I worked really hard to work my way up the uh, food track, and I ended up getting, um, you know, I get nine points for coming first place, and you just only ever use it once. Just take one little baby step and you come in second place and get six points. That is ridiculous. That is so out of whack. And it drives me insane when it's so easy to just say, you know what, in a two-player game, put a third player's pip on here. And if you want to get second place, you got to beat that person or first place or whatever. Ah! I will keep complaining about it until they do it, um, and I hope they will, because there's one more thing before I go I really have to talk about that blows me away. And actually, I rate higher than just about everything else I have heaped um, praise-wise on this game. It's this rule book. Don't get me wrong. The rule book is good. It's, it's really solid, very easy to learn. Of course, it's an easy-to-learn game, so it would be hard to kind of mess this rule book up. It's not the rules teaching that makes me so impressed about this game. It is the first page and the last page. Uh, the first page, of course, has a nice little um, story summary, setting the groundwork and all that, and who we are and what we're doing. That's great. But they don't stop there. They put in a pronunciation guide. That's how I know I was saying it wrong. It's Zapotec, not Zapotec. It's Zapotec. And, um, you know, Oaxaca. And um, uh, Koshiho. I, I wouldn't have known it was Koshiho. It was the name of my opponent. And that's awesome. And so is this. While steps were taken to ensure a respectful depiction of the treatment of the Zapotec culture, a few geographic abstractions remain. Contrary reality, contrary reality. So they r recognize and um, uh, uh, point out where they've had to take creative license. And that's great. I want to see more of that. I can think of one other game I've seen this in. Um, it was Shogun no Katana. I loved it there. I love it here. Because it shows that the developers really care. Um, and there's one more way I know about it. I said, hey, this first page is great. This last page is maybe even better. And I've been seeing this in a lot of board and dice games. And I've been meaning to mention it. Because, hey, the last page is the credits. That's all fine. Hey, great play testers, rule book writing, etc. What's that? Cultural consultants, Carlos and Maria Gonzalez. Hey, board game industry. If you would like to make a game that um, uses cultures other than your own, maybe... Spend a few minutes working with people who are experts in that culture um, so that you can actually also have a game that is more respectful. I guarantee you, your game will become better. The more it can hew towards real life, the more it can actually um, tell a story that is respectful and honest to the source material, the better it's going to be for everybody. And I love that Board and Dice, I mean, talk about being ahead of the curve, they've gone so far as to ratify it into their development process so it goes into the credits of their games, and they've been doing this more and more. Oh man, Zapotec makes me so very happy. One minor complaint that I'll probably just go and have to go a house rule, like I have to keep doing, um, but otherwise, just a phenomenally big game in a decent sized package in a very short time frame. That's Zapotec, and thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.